Hi there, welcome to the Hydrogeoanalyst video training series. My name is Braden McNeil and I'm the software trainer here at Waterloo Hydrogeologic. In this video I'll introduce you to the Query Builder module available in HGA. Knowing how to effectively use the Query Builder is absolutely crucial for HGA users, since queries are the way that data is passed from the database into the various modules supported by HGA. For example, if you want to create a site map with water level contours, you would need to first build a query for the water level data, which could then be fed into the Map Manager module. Or if you want to create a water quality report, you would first need to build a query which would retrieve all of the desired water quality parameter data. This is the way that most of the modules in HGA work, and most of the work that you do in HGA will start by building a query to retrieve the data that you need. You can access the Query Builder module by clicking this button right here in the toolbar. When it opens initially, it should be relatively empty and grayed out. As you can see here, it's not active. But we can use these toolbar buttons here to create a new query or to open up an existing query. It should also be noted that the project tree does have a record of all of the queries saved to an individual project. That means that you can very easily double-click a pre-saved query in order to execute it again and display all of the associated data here in the Data Query tab. You can also right-click and select Edit Query, which opens up the selected query directly in the Query Builder tab. As you can see here, the uh, Query Builder interface is no longer grayed out. It's active, which allows me to make changes to the selected query. You can also right-click directly in the project tree in order to create a new query. When a new, created, uh, when a new query is created, then you'll see this window open up here. At this stage, you'll need to provide a name for the query, and also select what type of query it is. For the vast majority of the queries that you build, the standard select query will be the desired query type, because this is the type of query that actually retrieves data from the database. The second type is the dynamic station group query, which allows you to build dynamic station groups. Station groups themselves are simply selections of stations which are saved here in the project tree. There are three types of station groups that are supported in HGA. The All Station Group is shown here in purple, and it's simply a collection of all of the stations in the current project. The blue icons here represent static station groups. For these static selections, you would manually add or remove stations to those individual static um, station groups. Finally, the station groups shown with the green icon are what we would call dynamic station groups. These are basically station groups where the selected stations are determined from a query. For example, you could build a query that looks for all stations where the clay layer is greater than 2 meters in thickness. As new stations are added into the project, they would automatically become part of this, new, this dynamic station group, if and only if they also have a clay layer that's larger than 2 meters. In any case, when you create a new query, um, then this window opens up here and the, the first thing that you would have to do is specify the name and the type of query. Let's work through a simple example together, building a query for the average water level data at all of our stations. Once we've entered the name and selected that it will be a standard select query, we can also specify where the query will be saved. It is quite easy to create new folders and just by dragging and dropping queries you can organize them here in the project tree. For our average water levels query, we'll save it into the water levels um, folder. So when we click OK, then again the Query Builder interface opens up. And as you can see, there are basically five main areas here in the Query Builder interface. The first is the area on the left-hand side here, which displays the entire structure of the database with all of the, uh, the different data categories, tables, and fields that are available for us to use in this Query Builder module. Using this uh, expandable um, menu, we'll be able to just simply drag and drop individual database fields into these remaining areas on the right-hand side. On the right-hand side of the Query Builder module, there are four main areas. The first is the Display Fields area, and below that we have the Conditions area and the Group Conditions area, and finally at the very bottom is the SQL Statement frame. The top three frames here allow you to draw, drag and drop tables or fields from the table uh, from the left directly into them. When you drag a new database field into a particular section, then you should see the SQL statement down below updated automatically. The three frames above will help you to build the SQL statement itself. Fields added into the display field section will be displayed when the query is executed. 
The fields in the condition section are used to set conditions or criteria for the query. And the group conditions area specifies grouping options when you use an aggregate function. Now, querying is the process of asking a question of the database, and since HGA is based on SQL Server technology, the queries used to retrieve information from the database take the form of SQL statements. SQL statements can be quite complicated, and they're not easy for someone who's not familiar with SQL technology to build, but fortunately, HGA will do all the heavy lifting for you, and it isn't necessary for you to actually know how to write these statements in the SQL language. So let's consider the fields we would like to display for our average water levels query. We'll be interested in the station name associated with each record, as well as some of uh, basic descriptive information about that station, including coordinates and elevations. So in order to display that information, we would simply open up the associated database table, the location table in this case, and we're going to simply drag and drop individual database fields into the display fields section of the query at builder interface. So as you can see, we've now dragged in the station ID, the name, the coordinates, and the elevation. Now if I save the query um, here, we'll see that the SQL statement at the bottom gets updated automatically. The moment I save it, and we'll expand this window again, we can see that the SQL statement has just uh, expanded by about one line here. So that's the beauty of the HGA Query Builder, is you don't have to write these SQL statements yourself. You just drag and drop individual database fields, and the statement gets written automatically. And now if we execute this query, let's see what will happen. Now to execute a query, we can click this button up here at the top, and it displays all of the associated data here in the Data Query tab. Now as you can see, my current query only has there, there are no conditions associated with it, and it also only displays information about our wells, the name, the coordinates, and the elevation. Obviously, we're going to need some more information for it to display the average water levels. So let's go back into the Query Builder interface, and we can add in the water level measurement data. So to do that, we're going to basically roll, scroll down here to the Monitoring Event Data category, and under the Water Level table, we can drag in the Screen ID, and the depth to water level fields. We can also make some small changes um, here in the display fields section using the alias column. So the alias column basically just simply represents the column titles in the executed query. So for example, if I wanted to specify that my elevations are actually in meters above sea level, I could simply type that in here. Or if I wanted to specify that the depth to water levels are based, measured based on the TOC elevation, I could write in depth to water level TOC meters. Now when we execute this query, we should see that these column titles have been updated. It's also possible to order the data in ascending or descending order for a selected field. So, for example, I can select ascending for our depth to water level measurements, which means that when we execute this query, the table basically should have the lowest water level, depth to water level measurements at the top and getting progressively larger. It's also possible at this, uh, here in the display fields to apply an aggregate function to the results of the query. So, since we're interested in the average water level value for each station, what we would do is we would actually select the average value here in the function column. This will ensure that only one value is returned for each station and that it represents the average depth to water level measurement. So now if I execute this query, we can observe the changes that we've made. Our column titles have been updated. We now have elevation with meters above sea level as the unit, and the units for our depth to water level are displayed as well. And with respect to the actual data here, we can see that there's only one value listed per station. That would be the average water depth to water level value. And as you can see on the right hand side here, they are ordered from smallest to largest. Please note that it's also possible to have HGA report simple functions. For example, if I wanted to include an additional column here, which has the groundwater level information in, in actual elevations, instead of simply measured depths, then I would need to use the depth to water level and the station elevation fields together. I can use the toolbar buttons right here to add in a new field uh, manually to the display field section, 
and then I would basically use the values here in the expression uh, the expression column for my elevation and my depth to water levels to build a, a custom expression. So what I'm looking for is the groundwater levels in, in expressed as actual elevation. So what I'll take is the station elevation and I'll simply type in minus the depth to water level expression. Now the alias here, we'll call this depth to water levels meters above sea level. And we can also order this in ascending value as well. And we'll show the average value as well for that. So if I save and execute this query, we can see that I now have two depth to water level columns. One of them is in simple measured depths and the other is an actual elevations. Now recall that the conditions frame here allows you to set criteria for the query. For example, let's assume that we're only interested in the average water level data for wells that are screened at some arbitrary depth. For this example, let's assume that we want water level data only for wells that are screened more than 10 meters below the ground surface. In that case, we would simply go to the well construction table and in the screen table, we would select the two field. So the screen depth, the, the screen starting depth, and we would simply specify that that has to be greater than or equal to 10. It is possible to add additional conditions in here, again, just by dragging and dropping. But if we do have additional conditions, then we would need to group them together using this and or column. And now in the conditions area, there's also a field for source conditions. This allows you to restrict your query to particular station groups if desired. To do that, you would simply select the station group option in the first menu, and then in the second menu, you would select which station group you want to restrict the query to. The other options are for project and database, and that determines whether the query would look through the project only or across the in entire database, which can potentially host multiple projects. Finally, the group conditions area can be used to apply conditions on the aggregate data. For example, here we're reporting the average groundwater level data, which is itself an aggregate value based on several records. If we wanted to restrict the query based on the results of that function, we would use the group conditions area. If, in this example, we could further restrict our query to only report the average water level values if that average value is greater than 2. Again, in this, what we would do in this case is go to our monitoring event data category, and then using the depth to water level field, we would simply drag that into the group conditions field. The function is going to be the average value, and we want to ensure that the average value is greater than 2. And as we've added new fields and new conditions to the data query, we see that the SQL statement itself has been growing longer and longer. As you can imagine, it would require a fair amount of experiences with databases and SQL Server technology to confidently write this query statement by hand. But using the HGA Query Builder, you can build these very complex queries just by dragging and dropping data fields and using these common logical operators. But please note that it is possible to write these SQL statements manually. If you're an advanced user who's familiar with SQL statements, you can simply click and write values directly in the SQL statements field. However, if you make direct changes to the SQL statement, it will prevent the Query Builder module from being able to generate those SQL statements automatically. So once the SQL statement is manually edited, you'll only be able to alter that statement manually. So if you're not an advanced user and you're not familiar with SQL statements, I would just recommend not using this area of the interface. Anytime you do try to modify the SQL statement, you should see this warning message appear to remind you that those manual edits would permanently disable the automated portion of the query builder, at least for the current query. So the end result of the query that we've just built in plain English would be to report the average water level values for wells in which the well screen is deeper than 10 meters and where the average depth to water is greater than 2 meters. I'd also like to point out that the HGA demo project does come preloaded with several uh, pre-built queries, quite a large selection of them. If you're new to HGA, I would highly recommend reviewing these existing queries since you'll probably want to create something similar in your own project. That's it for the Query Builder video. 
In the next video, I'll introduce the online sharing module. Thanks a lot for watching, and stay tuned for more HGA training videos.